Over the next few videos, we're gonna dive into CloudKit. Starting with this one, which is just an introduction, uh, telling you what it is, you know, what it can do, and then we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons, because just like every other programming decision, there are trade-offs. There are certain types of apps that would be great for CloudKit. Certain type of apps, you should stay away from CloudKit. So we're gonna talk about the different, you know, pros and cons. So CloudKit was announced and introduced in 2014, and it's essentially Apple's backend service. If you're familiar with Firebase or you've heard of Firebase, and I can build your backend there. To put it simply, uh, it's essentially that, but Apple's first party version. And it's available on all Apple platforms. So if you're developing a Mac app, an iOS app, a watch app, you can get access to it. And it does power you know, a lot of the apps that you're used to using every day. Notes, photos, the Apple News app, uh, the WWDC app that we're all about to be using a lot. Those are all powered by CloudKit. And on that note, that should let you know that it doesn't have any scaling issues, right? Apple uses it with like millions of users, so you're good to go there. Now let's talk about the price. Like how much does this cost? Well, it's pretty much gonna be free. Let me pull up the cost structure here. So here's the main CloudKit site. I'll link to this in the description of the video. We'll scroll down. You can you know, check this out if you wanna learn more. There's a dashboard we're gonna to touch on in a future video. Here, like I said, you know, millions of users are relying on these CloudKit apps. I already mentioned that. Uh, but here's the pricing thing, right? Reach more users for free. So CloudKit provides a generous amount of free data uh, transfer and storage, making it easy to build, test, and grow your app. So essentially what they've said, and they've said this in, in previous WWDCs, is they want CloudKit to be free, but they don't want people to be able to abuse it. So that's kind of what these limits are for. But on this website, you can kind of drag this and see your, your pricing. So I'll scroll down because my screen's kind of blown up. There you can see at the bottom, total cost zero. But you can see, you get more storage uh, and data transfer the more users you have. So it scales up with you, as you can see. And then an interesting thing here, in the next video, we're gonna talk terminology. But you know, to get ahead of myself a little bit, there's public databases and private databases. Think of the public database like the Apple News app where like everybody can see the news articles. Think of the private database as like your own personal notes app where like your notes are your private notes. Nobody else can see those. So in the private database, that data and all that stuff goes against the person's like personal iCloud drive, you know, allocation, whatever they have. So if you are building an app that is very heavily reliant on like private data, then you'll probably never hit this because most of your stuff will go against the, uh, the users. So anyway, like I said, the idea is for it to scale with you and Apple wants it to be free. They just don't want people to abuse it. That's why there are like certain limitations. And if your app like really, really blows up, you know, there are overage charges, as you can see here, you know, asset storage is, you know, three cents per gigabyte, it's et cetera. You can read those. But if you hit those, yes, it's gonna cost you money, but that's probably a good problem to have if you exceed these limits. Uh, I think you'll be happy to have that problem. So that is the pricing, uh, essentially it's free. Now let's discuss the pros and cons of why you may choose CloudKit over something you know like a Firebase. So talk about the pros first. So one big thing you get is called automatic authentication, right? There's no need for building a login screen or managing emails, usernames, and password, right? It's linked to the user's iCloud account. Like, you know, you've used Notes, you've used Calendar, you've used the WWDC app. You don't have to log into that. It's just tied to your iCloud account. Well, when you build an app on CloudKit, you get that exact same functionality. So you'll see in WWGrub, when we build that, like there's no login screen. We just automatically have a user created that is connected to their iCloud account. Very nice. So another benefit is the syncing of data across devices. As an Apple user, I assume you have an iPhone and a MacBook if you're taking this course, you know the beauty and the power of, you know, taking a note on your phone and then it just magically syncing instantly to your MacBook, that kind of stuff. That is CloudKit in action. That's kind of what powers, you know, the ecosystem of Apple. So again, if you're building apps on CloudKit, you can uh, build in that functionality into your apps as well. And another benefit is that it is Apple's first party supported framework. Like some of their major apps, notes, photos, news are built on CloudKit. So that's a pretty good sign that it's gonna be supported moving forward. Ask anybody that got burned by the Parse SDK, getting bought by Facebook and then going out. And then when Google bought Firebase, people thought the same thing was gonna happen. I think Firebase is gonna be around, but the point is, that is always a risk that Google could just shut down Firebase. I don't think they will. I think they like the data too much, but uh, it is a risk. And this being first party is great. Not to mention, you don't have to deal with like CocoaPods or Swift packages or, you know, all the bulk of the SDK. If you've ever brought in a Google SDK or the Facebook SDK, you know, those are pretty heavy. Don't gotta mess with any of that. It's a simple import cloud kit. You're good to go. So I'm just a fan of using first party stuff over third party stuff. 
Also, if you wanna build sharing into your app, that's pretty simple. Again, the Notes app, if you've ever collaborated on a note or shared a photo album with another iCloud user, that kind of collaboration, uh, that's built into CloudKit. And then finally, privacy, right? You know, Apple's real big on privacy. Like I mentioned uh, during the cost stuff, uh, you have a private database that you can uh, give to your user. And even you as a developer of your app, like you can't go into your back end and see what's in you know, that person's private database. Completely private, completely hidden from developers. So again, if you're building this type of app, WWGrub is not gonna use the private database uh, for obvious reasons, right? We want everybody to see the locations. We want everybody to see you know, who's at what location. Uh, but again, if you are building an app, where maybe a user does create their own notes or maybe they're managing their business on your app and you want that to be private, there you go. Uh, you can ensure your customers uh, are gonna have great, you know, Apple quality privacy. And now onto the cons, cause you know, it's not all good. Uh, this is Apple only. So for your product, your company, your business, whatever, you do plan on building an Android app, this might not be the best way to go. On that note real quick, from a self-proclaimed fanboy, so take it with a grain of salt, I think a lot of people default to, I have to have an Android app, I have to have an iOS app, have to cover both. Again, just what I wanted to point out, kind of the theme of this product about being niche and narrow, look on the Mac App Store. There are tons of apps that only support the Apple ecosystem that are doing very, very well. So I'm not gonna tell you which way to go, but don't completely rule out an Apple-only product. And again, I'm a fanboy, but there's plenty of companies doing very well uh, with just that. Now a note on that, if you do have kind of like a website version, there is something called CloudKit JS. Uh, we're obviously not gonna touch that, JS for JavaScript, but that will allow you to access, you know, your CloudKit databases uh, from your website. Now another small con is that you do have to have an Apple developer account, the one that costs $99 a year in order to build with CloudKit. Now I assume a lot of you probably already have that, uh, but you know, if you're just getting started and you haven't decided if you really wanna pursue this seriously yet, maybe you haven't spent that $99 yet, uh, but that is required. So just wanna put that out there that could be looked at as a con if you're just starting to you know, practice with it and develop with it. And then the last con is that if you hook up a app with CloudKit, uh, you cannot transfer that app. Now, what do you mean transfer the app? So let's say we did build DubDubGrub as a real product and someone came along and says, Sean, that is an amazing product. Uh, I wanna expand that to other conferences all around the world. I wanna buy your app off you for a million dollars. Whatever, <laughs> we can dream, right? Uh, well, in this case, I would have to give them my entire developer account because with CloudKit, you can't just sell that app. Now, that is a minor inconvenience in my opinion because it is a very solvable problem. Uh, a lot of people probably aren't gonna like the answer, but how I solved it because my app that I'll build someday, uh, Creator View, is in that area where I think I'm, I can build Creator View to have the potential to get acquired someday. So from the start, I created a separate developer account, you know, paying the extra $99 a year. So I'm paying for my personal account and that account. And I understand money is different for everybody and paying an extra hundred bucks a year sucks. But uh, I'm preparing for the fact that if I decide to build a company around this, decide to build a startup around it, or it does, you know, get acquired, then I have already like prepared for that. So uh, it's an annoying problem that you can't transfer it, but it is definitely solvable. <laughs> for the low price of $100 a year. But uh, I just wanna paint the picture because a lot of people see that about CloudKit and then rule it out immediately. And I'm like, eh, if you really wanna use CloudKit and it works with your app, like, and you plan on your app getting acquired later for, you know, when apps get acquired, it's not for a hundred bucks, right? We're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars. So uh, the hundred dollars a year is a small price to pay to have that flexibility. But hopefully Apple fixes that uh, in the future because it is annoying. Now let's talk about, you know, why I chose CloudKit for DubDubGrub and like how that's a fit, just as like an example, right? Well, duh, I wanted to teach it in a course. <laughs> so put that aside, but I knew I was going to be creating my own data. Like I mentioned before, we're not, you know, using the Yelp API or pulling data from elsewhere. I knew I was gonna curate and create my own data set. So I knew I needed a backend as a service, right? So now that we're in this lane, okay, do I use Firebase? Do I use CloudKit? Well, this app is for iOS developers that are going to WWDC, an iOS developer conference. So uh, the likelihood of needing Android is probably none. Okay, so that problem's out. And then I'm just a really big fan of that automatic sign-on, right? <laughs> Who likes building login screens and having to have your user, you know, do the whole login, then you gotta do the whole forgot password. For, like, it's just so annoying. So to completely take that off the table and just have the automatic authentication, that's a huge win for me. So I love that. And then finally, I'm just a fan of first party stuff. Anytime I have the choice between a first party thing and a third party thing, I'm pretty much always gonna go first party unless it's just 
horrible. So that's a brief overview of you know what CloudKit is, some of the pros and cons, and how I thought about it, and why I thought it was a good fit for Dub Dub Grub, aside from the fact that I wanted to teach it. Uh, all right, we're gonna dive deeper into the future videos. Uh, let's keep it moving. In this video, we're gonna talk about some basic terminology and definitions uh, that you should know and understand before you start using CloudKit. And we're gonna start at the very top with a container. So a container is app specific. Like for example, you know, Notes has a container, Photos has a container, Dub Dub Grub has a container. And if you remember in Xcode, we created our container, right? I'm gonna pull up the screenshot there. You remember checking that little box and we created the container? There you go. So the container is kind of like the, the big overall container, for lack of a better word, uh, for your app. There's gonna be stuff inside that container that we're gonna talk about next. So within that container, there's three main databases, right? A public, a private, and a shared. And their names do a pretty good job of describing what they'll do, but we'll dive in. So your public database is for things that you want every user of your app to be able to see, right? So the Apple News app is an example, right? You don't wanna hide articles, you want everybody to be able to read the articles. The WWDC app, right? When they put up the WWDC videos, we want everybody to see that. In our example, in Dub Dub Grub, our locations, right? The, the Chipotle's, the original Joe's, those are gonna go in the public database because we want all our users to see it. So hopefully you're, you're, you're starting to see the kind of data that you want in the public database. Now for the private database, which I described a little bit in the previous video, but now that is for user specific data. Again, the notes app, like all my notes that I'm looking at right now, uh, that is in my private container. My photos are in a private uh, container. And like I mentioned before, all my data as a user of the notes app in my private container, that goes against my iCloud storage quota, not the apps. Remember we talked about how much data your app could hold? Remember in the private database, that doesn't go against your app, that goes against the specific user's allocation. So that's a, a good thing to know. And then the big privacy thing with a private database is that uh, even as the developer, like if we had a private database in DubDubGrub, we don't, but pretend we do. Uh, you know, you as the user of DubDubGrub, I can't see whatever you put in that private database, even as a developer with my backend, you know, command center that I can see everything. So with private databases, you get the Apple level privacy. So good thing there. And then last, we have the shared database, which is, uh, you know, items that are shared between users. Again, the example of this is the uh, collaborating on a note, right? If you've ever done that with a user, or sometimes you can share a photo album uh, with another iCloud user. So that kind of stuff is in the shared database. So again, the three databases, public, private, shared, and their names do a pretty good job of explaining them. So the next topic is records, and we're gonna talk about a record type as well. So uh, our data, right, we're gonna have a DDG location, again, DDG is dub dub grub, and DDG location is a record type. We're gonna declare that record type, and then we're gonna give it, you know, properties, right? Just like when you're creating the model in your app, right? You have a, rec a DDG location, you know, that's gonna have a name, an address, you know, a description, like all the stuff that's on our location. So that's record type, and then an actual record is an instance of that type, right? So if DDG location is the record type, then the record would be Chipotle, uh, Original Joe's, Peggy Sue's 50s Diner, whatever, right? All the individual locations are a record of record type DDG location. And you'll see when we build this app, you know, we're gonna be constantly, you know, fetching, saving, updating records, right? So records is kind of like the data that gets transferred back and forth. So those records can either live in, you know, your public database, right? Our DDG locations are going to live in our public database. Um, you know, if you had a private record type, that would live in your private database, et cetera. So records, you know, live within the different databases. Next up, let's talk about a CK reference. So I'm going to pull up uh, the CK record again, and these are all the types of data that you can attach to a record. It's the typical things, right? A string, an array, an asset, which is like an image, but you can also see we can attach a reference. So what a CK reference is, is a way to connect two records. You basically create a pointer to another record. So the example of that for dubdubgrub is our DDG profile, which we haven't talked about yet. We're gonna have that profile object is going to have a reference to a DDG location. And what that represents is the DDG profile is essentially like our user object, but a user is gonna be able to check into a location. So the reference from the profile to the location is essentially saying like, this profile is checked into this location. So you use a reference to connect the two. Finally, let's talk about the workhorse of CloudKit and that is CK operation. These are, to put it simply, kind of like the network calls, like how we're gonna communicate and interact with uh, CloudKit, right? That's how we're going to fetch, query, save, delete, that kind of stuff. 
you know, when we pull down our list of location, that's a CK operation. When we update our profile, that's a CK operation. When we query to see what users are checked into what locations, CK operation. See where I'm going with this? Now there's kind of two, calling it two types is probably not the correct words to use. So the CK operation is kind of like, you get the full power of, of NS operation, right? You can do a lot of stuff like uh, determine your quality of service. You can do batch fetches, batch updates, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can even fetch partial records, which is awesome, right? So you don't have to pull down all the data from the entire record, right? If we just wanted the first name from our user, we can just pull that piece of data down rather than pulling the whole user object down, right? So the ability to fetch partial records is really cool. So again, think of CK operation as like, oh, you get the full power. There's a convenience API built on top of that that uh, lets you do the common things like in much less syntax in a quicker way. So uh, think of like, hey, I just want to save our profile. So you're just saving it after you enter the stuff. Boom, you can use the convenience API for that because that's really simple, straightforward. In the convenience API, you can only do on like one record at a time. That's why I use the saving of the profile example because we're just, anytime a user uses our app, they're saving the profile. That's one quick save, done. So think of the convenience API that we can use on top of that as you know being pretty limited, but it can handle a lot of common stuff. And then if you need the full power, you go down to CK operation to do again, batch updates, partial records, the quality of service, all of that kind of stuff. So again, CK operation is the workhorse. You're gonna see us use this a ton. So if you're not quite sure about it now, you're gonna get a lot of experience with it throughout the course. So that's the terminology and definitions to give you kind of like a baseline knowledge on how CloudKit works. If this was your first time hearing all these terms, like records, containers, database, like I recommend watching this video again. It's probably not gonna be that long. Um, watch it again, uh, or after we start working with it, then come back and rewatch it, revisit this. Um, at least that's what I found with my learning is I can watch all the WWDC videos, read all the blog posts I want until I touch it, until I play with it, until I get to use it. I don't fully understand it. So what I found, like even when I was, uh, you know, diving into CloudKit for this course, like, yeah, I did all the WWDC videos, I watched it, but once I built the project and then went back and watched those videos, they made so much more sense and really solidified it. So uh, I highly, highly recommend revisiting this video after we've worked with it a little bit. All right, on to the next video.